Hey guys, how's it going? John here. Today we're going to be solving another LeetCode problem and this problem is called binary search tree range. Um, I decided to choose this problem because in my last LeetCode problem I made a mistake where I wrote BST for a function name uh, when it's supposed to be just like a binary tree I believe. But I, you know it got me thinking about binary search trees and, and I thought it was a good time to start introducing this topic to you guys. Binary search tree is actually one of the most interesting data structures. Uh, it's mainly because it, it's a really good one to study on because it introduces the concept of, hey, what kind of data structure can I create in order for me to solve a specific purpose? And a binary search tree, the you know, it's right in the name itself. The binary search portion of this tree is really clear what it's trying to do. Basically, if just by reading the name of the binary search tree, you could uh, immediately think that, hey, uh, there's probably uh, two choices, like binary, right? Zero or one, like two choices. And it's geared, this data structure is geared for search because, it, you know, it's right there in the name. And also finally, it's a tree structure. Anyways, I decided to, cut this particular video in two sections. The first section will be me just explaining what a binary search tree is and kind of like the properties that are involved. It's not gonna be an inclusive, like um, the like a tutorial on a binary search tree, but it will be just the minimum information that you need in order to solve this particular legal problem. Um, and then the second half will obviously be me solving the problem. So I'll annotate like the different sections of the video below. So check out the descriptions. But yeah, let's dive into this video. So part one of this video, let's quickly talk about what a binary search tree is. To be very specific, a binary search tree is a node-based tree structure that is optimized for search. And it accomplishes this feature by optimizing the child nodes in a very, very specific way, in an organized way. So here are the properties of a binary search tree. One, the left subtree node only contains values that is less than the parent node. Two, the right subtree node only contains values that are greater than the parent node. Three, both of the left and right node subtrees has to be binary search trees. These are essentially it for a binary search tree. So using these three properties, you could actually do a lot of incredible things. For example, finding a specific node is very easy in a binary search tree because you have these specific rules. For example, you could start at the parent node and then say, hey, is my node greater or smaller than the node that I'm currently at, my target node? If it's greater, then go to the right. And then you ask the same question and then you could say, oh, if it's greater, then go to the right you know, and then, or go to the left if it's smaller. And eventually you'll find the target and you're guaranteed this behavior because your nodes are organized in a very specific way. So you're always guaranteed to find the value as long as you properly traverse the tree. Now, in terms of traversal, traversing a tree is uh, one of the most fundamental things you need to know in working with a tree. You can't really do anything without knowing how to traverse a tree. Now, there's many ways to traverse a tree. One is using recursion and there's also a iterative approach to uh, traversing trees. But the most important thing to know the difference between is depth first search versus breadth first search. Just to very briefly talk about it, breadth first search means that you will be looking at all the, so you will look at nodes, all the nodes that are closest to your parent node first, and then you'll go down to the next level. Depth first search means that you're going to go take one node and go all the way down to its child nodes and then go back up and then and then vice versa and you'll do this depth first. Um, an easy way, now there's different ways to implement depth first search versus breadth first search. I'll go to that in another video, but one tip I could give you guys is that um, I, I use this mnemonic to like kind of uh, memorize like what I need to do, but for if you want to do um, a breadth first search, then you have to use a queue. Um, and that's another data structure, but I, I think of it like BBQ, like barbecue. So breath first search is it starts with the letter B. So BBQ, you need to use a Q, and then obviously the other one, you need to use a stack or something else. Anyways, um, finally, the last thing that you'll know, you'll need to know here is like actually traversing it. There's many different ways to traverse a tree, like in terms of the order of the uh, nodes that you see first. So there's like in order, post-order and pre-order. 
So there's different ways, like base. it just means like which nodes do you see first when you're traversing the entire tree. But yeah, so these are just like large subject matters that you need to kind of know. And um, yeah, I hope this was good enough explanation. And, and when I start talking about it and when I'm actually solving it, you'll you'll be able to relate. And I'll link videos uh, below because, because I haven't done these videos yet. So I'll link videos below on these different topics. But yeah, so let's get to the solving of the problem uh, right now. Let's take a look at this problem. Let's read it real quick. Given the root of the node of the binary search tree, return the sum of the values of all nodes with value between L and R. L and R it stands for left and right. Anyways, uh, here's the other important part. Uh, the binary search tree is guaranteed to have unique values. This is kind of important for this particular problem. Okay, so so how will we solve this problem? Let's like take a step back and let's not think about this as a binary search tree. Like what is this exactly? So let's take a look at like these numbers. Um, for example, let's not let's not worry about this like null because this is really specific. That null is specific to binary search tree. It's to describe a leaf node that is null. Um, but let's take a look at this and then let's say okay. So if we have a value that is uh, left value that is seven, so this is the left range, and then the right that is fifteen. So all we're really doing here is looking at these set of numbers and asking yourself, hey what values are you know larger than what values that are in between here and what's the sum of that so in this case the value would be 10 um 15 skipping the five skipping the three skip uh adding the seven because it's inclusive mind you and skipping the 18 right because 18 is out of the range of the right so that turns what that's like 32 yeah 32 so and if you look at this output example it's 32 no stop stop cars that's essentially all we're doing we're just looking at a bunch of numbers and we're asking ourselves hey really okay i think it worked let's go ahead and start working on this problem so the first thing i like to do for any leak code problem is to think of the base case um uh think of like like think of a case where this we, we don't even have to like execute this problem um, and that's obviously when the root is null then we could just return null I guess um, the next thing that we need to do here is so to solve this problem the, the the hardest part of this problem is how do you traverse a binary search tree how do you look at every single node um, and then determine whether or not to you know include this in our summation so in this particular problem what we're going to do is a death first search um, essentially just it's, it's essentially just iterating every single item in a death first search pattern and uh, we'll probably use it in order in this particular matter the in order post order or pre order like portion doesn't really really matter because in the end you're just gonna be looking at the the point of the problem is to look at every single item and then only add the items that is within the range let's first solve the portion where we're just iterating over the tree just going through every single node in the tree so to do that, we're gonna create a function called def first, uh, def first search, um, and we do DFT for short. And then here, sorry, I'm typing on top of a cardboard box because I don't have the space or anything right now. So it might be a little shaky. I'm sorry about that. So if so, here we're gonna write a base case if node and return null. And then here we're going to do a recursive search on the left and then the right node. Dot left and the first, oops, not T, search, the first search, and this will be node dot right. Okay, so just by doing this, we've implemented a function that given when you, when you execute it with the root node, it will go through every single node just by this and um, this is a recursive call obviously I'm just calling itself and then right here is saying hey if I don't see any more if I hit a leaf node return so we don't really actually have to do anything with the return value here and I'll explain that soon but let's go ahead and invoke this the first search which is uh, and we're gonna pass the root node now um, here's the 
so just by doing this, we've created a function that executes an inner function called death first search that iterates through every single item in the node. Now, this is almost, if you think about that like array example that I show, it's almost like saying, hey, just go through the entire array. And then what's the next part we need to do? The next part is just to uh, create like a variable called results. For example, let results results equals zero to start off. And then every time we see a value that is within the range, add it to the results. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we do it right inside here, this is considered uh, in order. I think if we do this above the left and the right, I think that's pre. And then if we do it below the right, that's post. But let's just do it. It doesn't really matter, like I said, in this particular. The order of how you see it doesn't really matter in this particular problem. But let's just do it in order. So here, if we say if the oh my computer is like okay, so if the no dot my computer is really hot. No, the value is less than L. Um, well, it's inclusive, right? So less than or equal to L. All right, sorry, greater than or equal to L. And no, that value is less than or equal to right. Okay, my computer is lagging because it's super hot and I'm running like multiple things. But anyways, um, all we're doing is using this function signature of a tree node right here, value. We're saying, hey, is L and is the node that we're currently looking at less than the, I mean, greater than the L value and then less than or equal to the right value? If so, then we're just going to uh, append, you know, continue adding to the results plus equal, geez, node value. Okay. And then now our, this is, um, Essentially, we're getting this result and we're adding it every time we see a value that is inside our range. And at the very end, we just have to return the results. Man, it's it's like <laughs> I like type it in and it just like comes in. All right. I, I probably just have to remove it, move my MacBook from the sun. All right, let's go and run this code. Hopefully I wrote everything correctly. I, I'm gonna do a scan after this, but okay. So it looks like that worked. Let's submit it. And there you go. Yes, it's been successfully accepted. So man, this is like the hardest conditions to record this video, but that's essentially it. This is essentially the problem. Um, there's other ways to solve this problem. And, and the other ways essentially is like, because there's many ways to traverse a tree. So breath first search, you could do all of this problem like iteratively and yeah, but there's a lot of ways to do this. You could convert this whole thing into an array. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but that's essentially the problem. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something new and I, you know, with all these problems, I hope you guys take like what's really important. It's not, you know, solving lead code problems of in itself is not really that important, you know, like, yeah, it's good for practicing and all that stuff. But, it, it, you know, the real reason why you solve these like lead code problem is because there's a lot of like hidden learnings from the problems. For example, in this problem, we learned about traversing a tree. Now traversing a tree is like an extremely, extremely useful skill in engineering. Like you need to, tra you need to know how to traverse trees all the time. You know, like if you're working with objects, for example, an object in itself is just a tree structure with the root being the object, right? Um, and every single key value pair are just nodes, for example. So you, you know, all of these like concepts are very, very useful and like death first search versus like breath first search, like breath first search is used in almost every map kind of map, um, map related problem where you're trying to find like the fastest route from point one to point B, like you usually want to use a breath first search because there's no, you know, you essentially you want to like find, you want to like take on layers at a time rather than going one uh, Brett one node all the way to his child instead you just want to look at all the nodes and then you keep like increasing your radius until you hit the other point that you want so that's kind of like the point of like this problem in, in, in a nutshell that uh, it, the reason why you study data structures and algorithms is, is because it allows you to solve really, really interesting problems efficiently and at scale. So, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this particular lesson. 
Um, it was a quick one, I hope. And I, I keep saying that I want to do all these like other videos and give like certain like data structures the time it really deserves. And you know, I, I have I'm working on that. So as soon as I <laughs> get those videos out, you know, in my busy schedule and all, I'll let you guys know. But yeah, thanks for supporting the channel for all the new subscribers. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.